This special aeronautics and space report brought to you by NASA. Okay. Yeah, do me a the score. Yeah, I'll provide you look three. If all goes as planned, the next time these men meet and shake hands like this, they'll be 140 miles above the Earth. How are you, Alexei? Don't you I'm well. your boss. Glad to see you. Ah. How's your family? Oh. ASTP, Apollo Soyuz Test Project. Now in its third year of preparation, all is nearly ready for this first link up in space with the Soviet Union. Each country will launch and fly its own spacecraft, but share a common docking module that will allow astronauts and cosmonauts to pass to and from each other's spaceship. I was born in Siberia in 1934, on May 30. Commander of the Soviet ASTP crew is Alexei Leonov. A worker, and my mother was a teacher. With him, 40-year-old flight engineer Valery Kubasov. Both cosmonauts have made previous space flights for the Soviet Union. The two of them will be piloting the Soyuz spacecraft. Astronaut Donald Deke Slayton, 51, from Sparta, Wisconsin, is one of the three American crewmen and will serve as the docking module pilot. Slayton talked about the mission objectives. The first one is a technical one, and that's to uh, demonstrate a capability to do uh, rescue on an international scale. Uh, we haven't had that capability in this country to do it on our own, and of course the Russians haven't either. Uh, over and above that, uh, I think probably one of the biggest benefits, and probably even more so than the first one, is uh, the stability to get together with uh, another country that we haven't uh, been too cooperative with in a lot of areas and do something constructive jointly. And I think this is probably the benefits of this will be much greater in many other areas than in the space area itself, just getting technical people together and teaching them how to work together and converse together. A key element in the mission is the docking module that will allow the two countries to link up their craft in space. Again, Deke Slayton. Well, a docking module is a relatively simple piece of equipment. It's the only new piece of gear, but it's basically an airlock with a new docking mechanism on the end of it. And uh, one end has the basic Apollo uh, drogue on so that we can turn around the same as we did in the lunar program and pull a limb out. In this case, we pull the uh, docking module out of the uh, booster. And uh, so it's attached to the end of the nose of the command module for the remainder of the mission. And it has a hatch on each end. And uh, the reason we need an airlock, probably should make that clear, is because the Apollo vehicle operates on an atmosphere of five pounds of pure oxygen. The basic Soyuz operates at uh, atmospheric pressure with the same composition as uh, air here on Earth, basically. For this mission, they've agreed to depressurize their vehicle down to 10 pounds pressure in order to prevent us from having to spend large periods of time going through uh, pre-breathing when we transfer from one vehicle to another to prevent the bends. So by them going down to 10 pounds, then we go through the docking module. Well, we go in, close the hatch from the command module side, uh, pressurize to 10 pounds, and that puts us equal to the Soyuz. We can then open the hatch on the Soyuz end and transfer into the Soyuz. Coming back the other way, we do the same thing. And we pressurize with a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen, so we end up with the same mixture as the Soyuz when we're at 10 pounds. Uh, the docking mechanism itself, which is the other basic part of that vehicle, is uh, American, uh, well, I'm not who, sure whose basic concept it is, but at least our half is built by the Americans, the Russian half is built by the Russians, and uh, they interface with each other, but their basic design is, is different. Ours is a, a hydraulic system, electric motors, theirs is more of a mechanical type system, but externally they look identical, internally they're quite different. Astronaut Vance Brand, 44, from Longmont, Colorado, is the second crewman and is command module pilot. Well, as command module pilot, uh, I'm essentially 
the middle seat man. I sit uh, between Tom and Deke. I have uh, responsibility for understanding and uh, re really having responsibility for solving problems in the area of, of the uh, command module should they come up. During launch, I assist Tom. I run the computer. Uh, after we get into orbit, I work with the optics a lot. Uh, the time of uh, entry, re-entry, uh, I'll be flying the left seat. We, we sort of, uh, in a nutshell, all are generalists uh, and, and understand each other's jobs pretty well, but uh, we home in a little bit on uh, being specialists, and in that regard, I'm a command module specialist. We ask Vance Brand to give us an overview of the joint mission, including the major milestones. Uh, next July 15th, we will have uh, two spacecraft launched, uh, one in the Soviet Union, uh, one in the United States. We'll have two cosmonauts on board the Soviet spacecraft, three astronauts uh, on board the American spacecraft. The American spacecraft will lift off at Cape Kennedy seven and a half hours after the Soviet spacecraft lifts off at, in Kazakhstan, a place called uh, Baikonur. That starts the mission. After that, in a nutshell, the Soviets stay up six days, we stay up nine. But Along the way, uh, they will get into orbit, and uh, we will launch into orbit behind them. It will only take us 10 minutes to get into orbit, but then it will take us roughly two days to catch up with them. We will rendezvous on the Soviet spacecraft. Uh, at the time of, of docking, uh, which is after we complete the, the rendezvous, we'll be over the Soviet Union and there'll be TV coverage. We will lock the two spacecraft together, and after that, we'll stay uh, in joint flight uh, with the spacecraft docked for two days, and we'll have a lot of joint activities. We'll, uh, with the cosmonauts, we'll be doing experiments together, eating together. We'll be uh, doing demonstrations. We may have some might, might have a press conference. We'll have many, many uh, activities uh, together. Now, <clears throat> there will be four transfers. Uh, it, it turns out that it's sort of a big thing to transfer between spacecraft because we have an airlock between us. Uh, so we will have four transfers uh, during these two days when astronauts transfer to the Soyuz spacecraft and vice versa. We'll have varying mixtures of crews during this period. After that, uh, af after we are finished, we'll undock. We'll have some experiments in uh, which we fly uh, close to one another. Finally, uh, Soyuz <coughs> will land in Kazakhstan. We'll continue in uh, space flight for a few more days doing experiments, and then we'll land near Hawaii. Commanding the three-man U.S. crew for the joint mission, astronaut Thomas Stafford, 44, from Weatherford, Oklahoma. Stafford, a veteran space pilot, flew previously in projects Gemini and Apollo. He discusses the joint training. Well, we started out both here and in Star City showing each other's side the basic systems that we'll use in each spacecraft. Then from there, we've gone into the procedures that we'll use as far as how the commands will and how to come together the basic um, operations of the hatches that open and close, the, um, the sequence that we bring pressure up, lower pressure down between the two spacecraft. And finally, emergency procedures in case of smoke or fire or other type of uh, unforeseen circumstances, contingency situations. Meals will also be jointly shared. Astronaut Stafford explains. Well, we've already selected our menu for the eat there. First, uh, Dick Slate and I will eat an evening meal over in the Soyuz. Then later on, uh, Colonel Leonoff will eat uh, lunch in our spacecraft at the same time Vance Brand eats lunch over in the Soyuz. So everybody will have a chance to eat in everybody else's spacecraft. Пожалуйста, Том, читайте первый параграф. Да. 
For both the astronauts and cosmonauts, it has meant learning a new language. Well, language has been a problem, you know, starting out, because neither one of the basic crews, at least the prime crews, could speak the other's language. We really had a crash course on it. We finally decided that what we will do is, for major commands and sequences, we will speak Russian and they will speak English. In this, it works out very well because when you speak a foreign language, you always tend to speak slower and speak more distinctly. However, on some of the, the announcements to the ground, we'll be using English at times, we'll be using Russian. As far as commands, when we open up the hatches, increase pressure, decrease pressure, we'll speak Russian, and they will speak English. Dalinia? What's that? Dalinia. Dalinia? Valley. Ah, Dalinia, Riki, uh, Volga. Es okna, es doma, možna vidit. Gorad i volgu, boras i jevo, žina, robotijut i centr, i centr je gorada. We see Apollo lift off, inserting into orbit, and we wish good luck and to further meeting. Thank you. I just heard the crew say Hayakali. Спасибо. Мне экипаж только что сообщил, сказал поехали. Аполлон пошел на орбиту. Желаем счастливой встречи с Союзом. Okay, uh, we're still hearing someone. The astronauts and cosmonauts were not the only ones that had to overcome language differences. Flight controllers and engineers wrestled with the problem too. I think it's someone in your area doing interpreting. Мы все еще продолжаем слышать переговоры с вашей стороны. Мы слышим женский голос. Нам кажется, что это говорящий по-русски. Нам кажется, что это ваш переводчик. For both the Americans and the Soviets, it hasn't been all hard work, though. Here are some of the things they did during their free time. Some 27 experiments are planned during the nine-day flight, ranging from stratospheric aerosol measurements to crystal growth. A telescope to scan the celestial sky for extreme ultraviolet radiation and a helium glow experiment that will examine the nature of gases found between stars were developed at the University of California's Space Science Laboratory by Dr. Stuart Boyer, one of the principal investigators. On a larger, more global picture, one would like to know how a star is born and what happens to it through its life and then how it dies. And some of these stages are better known than others, but um, it's clear that stars are born out of the material, this tenuous gas in the interstellar medium. Now exactly how they're born, there's a lot of uncertainty, but it is clear that this material, which is a billion, billion times less dense, more tenuous than the air in this room, is the place where stars get started. It's that stuff that makes a star. Video corridor has started. Uh, Roger. On my mark, press start switch. Stand by for terminal count. Apollo Soyuz test, test project. Preparations are nearly complete for this first joint space flight between the United States and the Soviet Union. An effort that offers hope for other mutually beneficial projects in the future as a result of this common goal. One, mark. This special report brought to you by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. <laughs>